All right, guys, so welcome to the uh, impromptu guest appearance by yours truly, Paul. Um, <clears throat> now, I just want to explain briefly um, a little bit about me. Um, I'm the wrong side of 45. I've um, been studying alchemy for pretty much most of my adult life. 20 plus years, 25 plus years. Um, how did I get into alchemy? Um, believe it or not, I was actually having a conversation on quantum physics. Um, you'll understand what's going on with that later on. Um, because I'm sure at some point we will be covering the wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny kind of stuff so those of you um that were here on the last class um what we did for those of you that are new to the class and welcome by the way um those of you that are new to the class what we did um was we had um various alchemy symbols and what we did was we drew them on a talisman um some people drew them on paper some people drew them on rocks um some people like me went completely overboard um but basically um what we did then with those talismans was during class um, we did a seven minute meditation. Now, when you're doing um, an alchemical meditation, it's quite different to how we would normally do a meditation. Um, during a normal meditation, you concentrate on your breathing, you concentrate on bringing in positivity, bringing out neg negativity, uh, that kind of thing. Now, when you're doing an alchemical meditation, it's what's known as an open flow state. So you don't necessarily just focus on your breathing. You don't, you pretty much open your mind and you hold your talisman. Having a connection with the talisman is very, very important. And depending on what you draw on your talisman will pretty much direct the way the meditation goes. Um, so can you in chat, if you were here for the last class, can you put your raise your hand for me, just so I can see how many new people we have here? Um, and if you are new, if you can also say in the chat that you are new, then that way I can get some kind of idea. As I say, I'm having to flip between screens because I'm having to use my uh, cell phone here. So let's have a look. Wow, well, chat's blowing up. Andrea was here last time. Oh, great, we've got quite a few newcomers. Well, it's good to see. Oh, you new folks. Welcome to the wonderful world of alchemy. Oh, New Zealand. Wow. Okay. Oh, and we've got Canada too. How many people have we got from the US? And do we have any from Europe? Oh, Sweden. Hi, Sophia. 
Puerto Rico. Indiana. Okay, so as I said, I, I briefly told you guys what we did in the last lesson. We were looking at alchemy symbols. Um, okay, superb. All right, if you raised your hand, go ahead and lower your hand. Welcome, Brittany. I'm glad you're here. Okay. So, for those of you that were here last time that did the talisman, you'll know that um, Alex gave you the homework of doing a hour-long meditation. Now, she didn't insist it was an hour long. You could break it up if you needed to. Um... But what I'd like to do is I would like to bring those of you that did do your homework. If one of you would like to come in and join the conversation with me. And we can talk about what happened during your meditation, what symbol you did, and have some thoughts on that. So who wants to go first? <laughs> Okay, let's... I'll go. Okay, perfect. Um, I didn't do the hour-long meditation altogether. I had to split it up. I actually did okay. it in a car. <laughs> I was not driving. Um, you know that? Yeah. <laughs> um, I was at... That was the only place that I could do it for the length of time I needed. And so I was a little distracted, but not by much. And, but to make sure I got the full gist, I also made sure my talisman was by me whenever I was about a computer, I'd just hold in my hand and whatever popped in my head, I would write down. Okay, now just remind me and the um, other people that are here, including the new people, what symbol it was that you drew. Okay, I did two symbols. Okay. On one side of the rock, it is moon. Yep. And the other side, one moment I have to find it. it is, uh, <laughs> antimony. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So I felt like both sides were polar opposites yet similar in some ways. Mm -hmm. uh, antimony was more rigid, I suppose, rigid, uh, scientific, and okay. where the moon was a bit softer. Okay. Okay. Um, what kind of things were you experiencing during your meditation? I... With the antimony, I felt like it was it was pushing me into not a uncomfortable place, but into a place that I wasn't sure I could handle, so to speak. Mm -hmm. I uh, felt like I. I'm not great, great, great with feelings. Uh, I more did images and more saw images. One of the things was doing experimentation, like with beakers and a bunch of lab equipment on a kitchen table. Interesting. And during my last meditation, I visualized a cliff, not me on it, it was just like a cliff on a car in a cartoon, just in the middle of nowhere. 
And this time I visualize a cliff, but I visualize myself standing on it and falling back purposely uh, backwards, falling off of it. And it gave a freeing feeling. Right. Uh, after about a half hour, I there was a the uneasiness kind of built up and felt apprehension. Okay. So I I had the antimony symbol against my palm. It's a curved stone, so the antimony symbol was against my palm, and my fingers were barely touching the moon. So I flipped it over, and once I switched to the moon side against my palm, the uh, tension, I could feel the tension just leave. Okay. The moon felt, uh, it was like instant serenity. And Perfect. then I had to stop to thankfully that calmed me down before I had to get out of the truck. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when I did, uh, so, so when I meditated again, probably another 30 minutes, First time was about 40 minutes, second time about 30. Uh, the, I started out holding the moon side. And again, it was just calmness that I felt. Uh, I got images of rabbits, like a very tall white rabbit. That's funny because I, I, I associate the moon with uh, the moon goddess, the Chinese moon goddess, Cheng Yi. Mm -hmm. And she is, she lives on the moon with a white jade rabbit. So that, okay. Um, and I visualized myself um, falling again, but I wasn't scared. It was, I, I felt safe and secure in, in the falling. I had kind of combating images of me having wings and me not having wings. That, that might have been my subconscious trying to give myself wings because I uh, my favorite book, the characters were mutant kids and they had wings. So I'm not sure how well that is from the symbols, but Okay. But when I was holding both, uh, well, when I had my palms against both of the symbols, I could still feel that I still felt the uneasiness of the antimony, but I felt safe from the moon. And for some reason, the word stasis kept popping into my mind. Okay. Okay. So I know Alex is probably going to be covering this too, but. What's the heck? Um, seeing as I'm the guest speaker, I'm going to chip my little five cents in here. Now, of course. Wh when we're talking about alchemy and we're talking about antimony, um, mm -hmm. it tends to represent, or you would normally expect with an antimony meditation, mm -hmm. um, to get almost animal instinct okay so um it's the animal tendencies that you find within people so that's why you probably weren't afraid to fall off the cliff okay does that make sense yeah it does um and the I have wings, I don't have wings, again, is a very typical thing that you would expect from antimony. Uh, one of the things they say about antimony is if you're feeling weak, mm -hmm. wear a talisman that has antimony, antimony on it, uh, basically... And it tells you that the power is basically from within you. Your power comes from within you. Okay. 
that makes a lot of sense because after we're after the meditation was over i did feel more assertive mm -hmm. could someone please explain what antimony is and what what the properties yeah. are yeah certainly uh antimony is basically it's something that when you look at it okay it looks like a metal um, however, it does not react like a metal. So if metal in appearance, um, but chemically, it will not react the same as, as metal. So, antimony is basically a metalloid substance, is how they refer to it. It's not a mineral. No. Technically, it's a metal, but it isn't a metal. Is it a man-made metal? No, it's naturally occurring. Okay. It is naturally occurring. But for instance, if you look at mercury, okay, we all know mercury as the metal. Okay, now mercury is also known as quicksilver because it looks like a liquid. But it's not a liquid, it's a metal. It's one of these, you'll find when you come to alchemy, there are a lot of different states that things can appear in. Um, like for instance, typically you extract mercury from cinnabar. Cinnabar is a mineral. Just like when you um, hear about people extracting ores from the ground, um, you know, iron ore, copper, um, that kind of thing, nickel. Um, so that's what that is. All right. Anybody else want to come forward and talk? Already in the theater, I'd take him a hook somewhere. I do have a question. Yes, sir. How does one go about extracting spirits? Like, uh, I know some people will make a uh, spirit out of things like, uh, I can't remember what it's called. It's a little flower milk thistle. Um, that is the realm of what we call spagyrics, um, which we will be getting onto um, in later classes, I believe. Um, but basically, it's through going through various alchemical processes. And what you're doing is you're going to extract the spirit, the oil, and the salt. So it, it's part of that process of um, going through all the different stages to get to those three points. And along the way, you know, it's various processes. And it, it's not like you're going to be doing... Um, like, for instance, if you're doing essential oils, in effect, you can use steam to extract the oil. Um, okay. But in order to get the salt and the spirit, you have to go through a completely different process. So it's just an alchemical process of extracting uh, the triprimer out of a substance. 
but I'm going to leave that for Alex because I'm not sure whether she's going to be covering that in class or not. Uh, I do have one additional question. Yes, sir. I know that there's a certain ore or mineral out there that is used in the process of ex extracting tin. Yes. I can't remember what that ore is. Um, there are, are you, what do you want about extracting? The oil of tin? Extract, uh, Wanting to know about the process of, of extracting tin from the ore. Okay, that, that's basically done through um, heat and calcination. Okay. Uh, do you calcination, know what... cal calcination is going to be your first. Uh, for those of you that don't know uh, what calcination is, uh, typically when you're doing an alchemical process, you go through four different stages. You go through the blacking, uh, which is where you reduce it down to its bare minimum. So just like a refinery will take the rock, crush the rock, heat the rock to get rid of the impurities, that's basically what you're doing when you're extracting tin, uh, nickel, Whichever one, whichever metal you're you're using from an ore, you will typically use heat, uh, which is known as the process of calcination. All right. Do you happen to know offhand what ore it is that tin is found in? Tin is its own ore. It is. Mm -hmm. I know. Uh, I thought there was another type of you can get mineral. tin from lead, huh? You can get tin from lead. Oh. Okay. What are the four stages of alchemy? Okay, you have what is known as. The blackening, um, then you have the yellowing, the whiting, and the reddening. Now, each of those, okay, let me backtrack here because depending on where you're getting your alchemy from because you, you have to remember as Alex discussed in the very first lesson alchemy originated in Arabia then went over to Egypt Egypt to Greece Greece to Rome Europe Middle East, so you know, I refer to Arabia as the Middle East, and I apologize if I got that wrong, but that's in my brain how it works. Um, then it went over to um, India, China, Europe, um, because of the Crusades, it got brought over into um, Europe, uh, spread throughout Europe and throughout the world. So Depending on which time period you're looking at will depend on whether they have four or seven stages of alchemy when it comes to the alchemical process, the coloring stages of alchemy. So, for instance, if you've heard about I can't believe we're already talking about this. But if you've heard about the uh, Philosopher's Stone, think of Harry Potter, okay? It was a red stone. Well, the Philosopher's Stone, if you go through your alchemical processes, 
the reddening is the last stage before you get the stone. Which is why quite often when people are talking about the Philosopher's Stone in film, you'll see it depicted as a big red stone. Because it's gone through the reddening stage. All right, so back to the meditation. Anybody else want to discuss their meditation with us? Let's have a look at the chat and see what's going on. Yes, uh, in order to answer your question, sorry, I'm going back into the chat. Uh, in order to answer your question, Mandy, yes, there will be many more um, alchemy classes. Um, I believe she has 10 planned plus this bonus lesson, so that will be 11. Does anybody want to discuss their meditation? Anybody else? Yes, Mandy, you can. They're actually on the uh, website under the student guide. Um, if you go to the study guide and uh, onto the alchemy section, the other um, classes that were being that have been recorded have been uh, placed there. Oh, honey, you're a star. Thank you so much. And obviously on our uh, YouTube channel as well. Um, and please, if you go to the YouTube channel, please click the subscribe button because as we upload additional classes, um, what we'll be doing is we'll be adding those to the YouTube channel. So, anybody else want to talk to me about the meditation? Is Miss Jackie here yet? Let's have a look. Jackie, 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 Jackie. I would if I could, even though it's my first time. I've been studying alchemy for a few years. I did a recent okay, meditation. Okay, yeah. Go for it. Awesome. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Mike. And thank you, Paul. I love everything I'm seeing so far. Awesome class. What I did is um, I've studied shamanism for years. So I took that, those modalities and applied them with my alchemical practice. Going through a divorce, I have the custody of my children and trying to work and manage a relationship with their mother is I drew the alchemical symbol of the water element. And then I did a zero point meditation where I activated that symbol to create a bridge so that I could go into the collective emotion itself. And through that, I asked to connect to my spirit guide and shamanism. When you start that process and you become initiated in that, you are asked to go into the spirit realm and choose a spirit wife. When I did that, I chose Gaia, Mother Earth. And she showed up right with me in there. <clears throat> and I held my two children, my son and my daughter, my son or yeah, my son on my right hand side, which is the, the masculine principle, and my daughter on my left hand side, which is the feminine principle. And I seen their mother appeared to me out of my lower, uh, my root chakra, and my back's been killing me. And I've even had a touch of cancer that I had to heal in there since all this process is about her divorce was about three years ago. And she showed up to me as like a snake that was connected to my root chakra. Like the body, bottom half of her was a snake and then her torso and her face looked like her. And I was telling her that this 
conflict between us is hurting our children. And I brought this here to resolve that conflict and to find harmony and coherence. And in that, I asked her if she could search within herself to see if that was something that would ever be possible so that we could teach our children how to resolve conflicts and just raise happy, healthy people. And in there, she said yes. And so I disconnected that her from my root. And when I did that, I pulled out a bunch of snakes. And I did that for about you know, three or four minutes. And then I asked her to, to present herself to me in a human form. And we were talking and I asked my girlfriend that I'm seeing now to, to come into that awareness as well, to help me regulate this conversation. And so what happened is my son got absorbed into my left or my right side. Like I took him into my energy field, my daughter and my right. And then my kid's mother and my current girlfriend, all of them went into me. And I brought all of those emotions up. And as I did that, I seen the, the seal of Solomon fall over my, my emotional well as I was raising that energy up through my chakras. And then when I brought that to my heart center, I seen the gold, um, sorry, the uh, star of life, a flower of life design over my heart and it opened up and this black little pearl came out and was hold, set in my left hand. And when I asked Gaia what I should do with this, she told me that this was all the unconsciousness within my being and that I have reached a purified state by coming to express this, not for myself, but for my children, because I asked for this to happen for somebody else other than, than my own being. And I asked her what to do with it. And she said, well, swallow it, go on the ride again. So I did that. And then when I did that, I seen like all these, there were like bars and braces all over my body and they shattered and fell to dust at, at the ground. And then I was standing in a golden egg shaped, like my whole aura was like an egg and it was all gold, which was very intense, very blissful. And I felt extremely supercharged and powerful, but at the same time, very relaxed and calm and clear minded. <clears throat> and when I asked, what that meant, it, I brought my, my lower animal nature and my higher nature, divine nature, together in a cohesive balance. And <clears throat> yeah, that was uh, December 20 or 30, 21st, the solstice, I did that. And after I came out of that, I asked, um, I can still feel my children resonate within me. And just a few, you know, four or five days ago, me and my ex actually had a whole conversation that didn't result in one of us getting mad at the other. So that was a huge step forward for us. And since then, uh, my daughter has been more receptive to emotional support for me because well, she can't see her mom and <clears throat> oh, there's tons of momentum in every area of my life. So right. That was my meditation. So you did a single point. Now, just for those that don't, maybe haven't heard that term before, you want to explain what a single point meditation actually is? Oh, absolutely. So when we're talking about single point consciousness, um, we're talking about bringing our, all of our awareness, the inner self, to a single point. So like when I look at the alchemical sign of the sun, there's a circle with a dot in it. I use that and I bring my awareness to that single dot inside the sun. And then I expand that awareness to fill up the entire space. Then I do that three times and I bring it back down to a single point and then I expand it again. And as I do that, I ask to reach the heart of the hearts of the hearts to reach the deepest inner chamber of my being. And that's how I activate any symbols or um, anything really that I need to work with, crystals, herbs. I always do that practice first so that I can activate any consciousness that is within the object that I want to work. Or in the case of the portal, I do that to 
bridge the connection and make a connection between the realm that I want to go to and my consciousness. Right. Okay. Now, typically, um, let, let's run this down for those that may not know this. When we're talking um, with regards to water, um, that is typically used for feeling and energy which pretty much sums up what you were doing. You were using energy, you were using feeling, you were using emotion. Right, 100%. So the fact that obviously, I mean, you sound like you have a little, uh, you, you've got a, a, a base knowledge of alchemy and the fact that you're, you're doing open flow meditation and just allowing things to happen. Yes. Um, like me, you're bringing other practices into it, in your case, shamanism, um, which allows you to use, as it were, the water symbol as a gateway. Um, that's a really important point for people to, if you are taking notes on this, I know this is kind of a free ball session. Um, but using and focusing on a particular symbol, just like you would with sigils, is very important. But the fact that you were, for want of a better word, able to travel, i.e. beyond the veil, into the spirit realm, by using a symbol as a gate, is a very, very important alchemy process. And even when we're doing laboratory work, even when we're making spagyrics or, you know, whether we're doing one of the processes, alchemy is practical, but it's also spiritual. Um, the length of that spirituality can get really, really, really intense. Um, all I'm going to say is I'm just going to say one name. And when Alex starts talking about it, you will understand. And that one name, which you may want to do a little bit of research on yourself, is a gentleman by the name of Saint. Domain. Yes. M A I N. Um, for those of you that do follow alchemy, you'll understand where that conversation is already headed. Um, okay, so, Mike, thanks very much for sharing that. Um, Anybody else want to come forward and help? I'm sure. Black Sheep, I've got you covered. It's in the chat. It's Saint Germain is the person's name. But be prepared to have your mind blown. Okay, so <clears throat> is there anybody else that wants to share or can I move on to something a little bit different? I'm not going to force people to share. It's entirely up to you uh, whether you want to come forward and explain about what went off, or what didn't go off, how you cope with it. All right. The internet, <laughs> uh, to answer your question, a good source, 
there are plenty of books written about Saint Germain. Um, there are even a couple of his um, uh, treaties, for want of a better word, um, out there. Um, I'll try to get together some resources. Um, and what I'll do is I will post them uh, in the main divination Facebook page. So if you check that out, um, you'll see a couple of links to uh, St. Germain uh, there. So let's move on. Um, still kind of a late meditation um yeah you're right the internet can be a sort of interesting information and not all of it is correct um so in alchemy we have 12 processes that we like to go through. Um, we don't always do all 12, depending on what we're trying to achieve. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to talk to you about Twisted Alchemy. Now, this is a class I did many, many moons ago um, at a different school, um, at a different academy. Um, and it was a little bit further down the line, um, but what I'll try to do is I will try to break everything down for you. So, if you go online, and again, take it with a pinch of salt, um, look up seven stages of spiritual alchemy. I'll go ahead and pop that into chat. And again, I'm going to apologize to everybody up front, but I'm on limited resources um, because of the thunderstorms earlier taking out the power. Um, and they're saying it's still going to be another three or four hours before we get it back. Um, okay, so seven stages for the twisted alchemy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in some terms um, that hopefully we'll be learning about later on, but I'm going to give you a basic overview of them. Now, if you remember earlier on, I was talking about the four different phases. And the first one of that was the blackening. Now, in alchemy terms, that is known as calcination. Uh, the easiest way for me to break that down for you is the breaking down of a substance by the use of heat. So if you think about, think about when you have a fire pit or when you have a fire. The flames burn, and the fuel, be it wood or whatever, charcoal, turns to ash. Okay, That is calcination in effect. However, when we talk about it in twisted alchemy, what I want you to think about is the breaking down the sense of self in order to change into something stronger 
and more self-aware. So kind of like Mike did with his meditation, taking a situation, breaking it down, trying to fix it. That breaking down process is what's known as calcination. Black sheep, I will get back to you with the answer to that um, off the board. So when, when we're talking about calcination, we're on about the breaking down, calcium wise. Okay. <clears throat> if you could, if everybody could make sure they're muted for me. So I, I'm getting a lot of background noise. And I really would appreciate it if everybody could just make sure that they're, they're muted. It would make my life so much easier. Everybody's muted. Perfect. Thank you. <clears throat> so, if we're talking about spiritual calcination, that's kind of a recognition of change that's necessary for one reason or another. Um... Ways you could do this, meditation, having some alone time to be with yourself and your thoughts, maybe journaling or reflecting on each day. So you realize you need to start down because of a situation, you realize you need to start breaking things down. So that would be calcination. Now, after calcination, you're going to be looking at something called the solution. Now, when you talk about dissolution, okay, what you're doing is you're taking the calcination, the stuff that's been broken down, and you're dissolving it into a liquid. Okay, now, typically, if you're doing an alchemy process, you would use distilled water at this, at this stage. Um, you wouldn't normally go onto an alcohol um, just yet. Um, although, you may need alcohol afterwards. So... The process of dissolution, when we're talking about the spiritual alchemy or twisted alchemy, as I like to call it, is what you're looking at doing is you're looking at immersing yourself into your unconscious mind. Um, you need to stop repressing buried thoughts or memories, lose track of time. Um, by immersion. So, just like when you're doing a meditation, sometimes time slips by. If you wanted to do dissolution, you could look at things like determining what you want to accomplish. And again, I'm going to use Mike as an example here. He wanted to resolve conflict between him and his ex-partner. Um, forgetting your own consciousness. 
Now, what is forgetting your own consciousness? An easy way for me to explain this is hyper-focus. And how do I explain hyper-focus? Have you ever been with somebody and they said, hey, did you hear that? And all of a sudden you stop and intently you're listening. That is a state of hyper-focus. A lot of people get it when they're reading or writing or painting or drawing. So you become completely absorbed in whatever you're doing at the moment in the hand. But by the same time, you realize you have to maintain that balance between your own abilities <coughs> and any challenges that you're going to face in the future. So just like some people get baptized, it's the submersion in water. It's the, the process has begun. So the step three that you'll be doing is separation. Now, if you're talking about lab work, separation is filtering the results from the dissolution to isolate individual components <coughs> to get rid of the baser or the undesired material. So think about when you've had <coughs> Excuse me. When you've had an argument and you make this conscious choice, do I let it go or do I carry on? What's worth keeping, you know, or when you write your pro and con list of something? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I'm choking. because I'm talking so much. Uh, so, you know, think about it as that, that stage of separation is getting rid of the baggage that you don't need. What I call the non-factor. Do I have any control of this? No. Therefore, should I worry about this? No. It's not something that I can control. So, what you're looking to do spiritually is you're looking to see what you can get rid of and what's worth reincorporating into the new you. So what you're looking at here is that transmutation process of going from lead to gold. So again, to use the old alchemy adage of turning the base metal into a noble metal, so on and so forth. Um, what you're doing is it's just a way for you to say okay what are we getting rid of here let's get rid of it and let's focus on the new stuff okay so that's going to bring us into the next stage which is conjunction now conjunction when we're talking again lab wise is the assembling of saved elements from the separation stage into something new and different. So, could that be a combination of the subconscious 
on the conscious mind? Could it be, oh, I'm an alpha, I'm a ugly ug male. Well, maybe you need to stop being an alpha ug ug male and explore your feminine side. Uh, a new version of you becoming the best part of who you already are. So you got rid of the crap, you got rid of the BS. Now we're going to start to put together all of the other good stuff. Great way to do this, meditation. Now, do you go the normal meditation or do you go the alchemy meditation? That is a question for you. That's a question only you can answer. So then we look at fermentation, which would be your next stage. Now, fermentation is, if we're talking about chemistry-wise, is the use of a microorganism to chemically alter a substance. So a great example would be you had add if you have sugar and then you add liquid and yeast you get alcohol everybody likes alcohol or if you add bacteria to milk how you can get cheese those would be an example of fermentation but when we're talking about it as far as uh, oops, lost my page. There we go. So when we're talking about fermentation, It's about accepting that new state. So, looking at the new and light, because you've broken things down, you've separated the baggage, you're starting to pull it all back together again. So, you know, we're looking at the new you. You energize you, so you begin to focus on that transformation. Um, now, could that be the union of your spiritual and mystical connection with a higher power? Again, thinking back to what Mike said about how he was focusing, how he was calling on. Yeah. So he was bringing his higher self, how he was talking about <coughs> his higher self to his bodily self. Um, that is fermentation. Then we have step six, which is distillation. So when we talk about distillation in the lab, and it'll be fun. It'll come up before you know it. <laughs> it, is. it is. And thank you very much, everyone. And you have a okay. Somebody's become unmuted and needs to remute. Now, when we're talking about chemistry. Uh, and lab work, distillation is where you add heat to a substance until it turns into a vapor, collecting that condensate or vapor, cooling it down into a liquid. That is distillation. Easiest way to think about distillation moonshine 
Okay, they, they've got their, their stuff all together and they apply heat hot to it while it's in the big copper pot. And then you see it going up and it comes down that big spirally copper tube and then drips out moonshine at the bottom. That's, that's one of the easiest ways for me to show you what distillation is without physically showing you. So another way when we're talking twisted alchemy, that, that state of distillation is the purification. Okay, so what you're looking to do is you're looking to get rid of the last of those impurities. Okay, you're looking to turn it into a vapor and get rid of your old self. And when you go through that distillation process, as I say, you're shedding everything old and you're creating something new. You've gone through all of these five other stages that you've been through and you're finally at distillation. So what are ways you can practice distillation? Well, the first thing you need to do is you need to take a long, hard look at yourself and think, Okay, what's remaining of what I was trying to get rid of? A great way to do this is, is when you start this process, before you even start calcination, is go to a friend, somebody you trust, and say, hey, tell me about me. What you think are good points of me? What you think are bad points of me? Where do you think I need to improve? And then when you've gone through the, six of, uh, the five other steps and you're finally at distillation, maybe you could go back to that friend and say, hey, how am I now? You know, what do you see from, what do, you, what do you see me as now? Has there been a change? Now, this isn't going to be an overnight kind of change. This, this, like all alchemy processes, is going to take time. But try looking at yourself through the eyes of somebody else. That friend that gave you an honest opinion and is now giving you a re-evaluation, for want of a better word. Um, a prime example would be, um, I served in the army. But when I came out of the army, I was an exceptionally nasty, <laughs> horrible... You <laughs> but first, we're getting... I had to go through a process, both professionally and, for want of a better word, spiritually myself, to get rid of those anger issues. What was my triggers? What was causing it? How could I get rid of it? How could I break it down? So I went through all of those stages. I, I went through the calcination, the dissolution. I went through the separation um, and the conjunction and the fermentation. And then when I got to the distillation, I found that I was a better person, not just anger-wise and emotion-wise, but my ability to communicate with people had improved so much through this process because I, I had to have a lot of hard, deep conversations with myself. Um, some people would refer to this as shadow work. Yeah, I did a lot of shadow work and I still do on a, if not daily, every other day. <laughs> 
you know, we always look to improve ourselves. We always look to refine ourselves in, in one way or another. As, as humans, naturally, we, we don't want to be that POS, you, you know, that nobody would come to or that nobody listens to or nobody seeks advice from. Only by going through these processes and, you know, going through, as I said, the, the previous five steps and you get to this dissolution and you can, you know, filter yourself out and you can, again, if you take the alchemy standpoint, you've gone from lead, so you've gone through the black, you've gone to the white, you're at the yellowing. And you're almost at that red stage. You're almost there. And that final stage, coagulation. So how do I describe coagulation? Well, going back to chemistry, uh, coagulation occurs when a liquid or a gas is permeated I can't even say this word, permutated to return to a solid state. Another great example of coagulation. When you scratch yourself and it starts to bleed. Right, exactly. Perfect. Well done. I'm not sure who that was who said that. The comment disappeared before I could see it. Yes, uh, Andrea, absolutely perfect. Blood, blood clotting, perfect example. That was going to be the example I used. That coagulation when the hemoglobin comes to the top and you get the scab and it's coagulated. It thickens. So yes, well done for using the blood as an example. That's a great example. Um, but when you're talking about it spiritually, you've got that rejuvenation. You have the higher self. You have achieved gold from lead. That's how we get from gold to lead. Now, some people will tell you that little journey that we've taken over the last half an hour, 45 minutes or so, some people would tell you that that is the Philosopher's Stone. It's about spiritual improvement. Because remember, alchemy can take a lab form where you're working in a laboratory with equipment, with, you know, retorts and Bunsen burners and spirit burners and condensers and all that kind of thing. Or it can be spiritual. Or it can be both. Which is the great thing about alchemy. Alchemy branches out into so many different things. You use alchemy every single day and you don't realise it. Think about in the morning when you make that morning cup of coffee. Is that alchemy? <coughs> Think about when you take the egg and you discard the shell and you boil it or you fry it or you scramble it. How you take one thing and make it into another. You know, it's really important, folks, that we get rid of the idea of the old TV image of an alchemist. Somebody who's clumped up, wearing their robes and their little skull cap, working away in a lab. Does that happen? Yes, not necessarily with the robes and the skull cap, but yeah, we do work in labs. Um, 
but it's also it doesn't have to be about the physical it can be about the spiritual too I make an, another example and I use this with a friend of mine the other day <coughs> he was talking about um, his morning routine because I'm taking him through these seven steps and he, he was struggling to understand it and one of the things he does every single morning when he gets up after his first cup of tea is made um, what he does is he does the dishes from the night before. And I turn around to him and I'm like, oh, right. So you, you wash dishes. I said, then uh, how, how do you do that? And he's like, well, I put the hot water there. And because he likes to do them by hand. Um, he's like, I, I put liquid onto a sponge and i put hot water there and then i scrub the dishes clean and then i dry them and i put them away so i'm like oh right so you've started off with something that's dirty and unclean you've applied a process to it by scrubbing it clean then you wipe it off and you put it up. So it's gone from not usable to usable. And then I turn around to him and I'm like, just out of interest. I said, when you scrub your dishes and you're using your sponge on, on your plate, how do you do it? And he's like, you know, I've never really thought about it. So I put an idea to it. And I said, Here's what I want you to do. When you wash your dishes, when you put the plate under the water and you go to scrub it, rather than just scrubbing it in a random motion, what I want you to do is I want you to go anti-clockwise. And he's like, why would I go anti-clockwise? And I'm like, you're a witch. I said, you're getting rid of the bad by doing something counterclockwise. I said, and then when you dry the dish after it's got clean, you can do that clockwise. Put good intentions on there for the next person that uses the plate. That little thing, that little trick alone of looking at things through an alchemist brain, adding a little bit of witchery with it. His wife says he is so happy, so, so happy after doing the dishes, whereas normally he, he was a grumpy, a grumpy bum, for want of a better word. Okay, Andrea, to answer your your question, the Philosopher's Stone is turning one thing into something else, taking something bad and turning it into something good. Now, when most people think of alchemy, they think of lead into gold and the old alchemists and how they used to transmute things from one substance into another. Well, yes, technically, that could be considered the transmutation of lead into gold. But if you talk about a spiritual practice, by going through those seven stages that we've just been through, if you imagine yourself at the beginning as a leg, but then by that final step, that coagulation step, and everything comes together, that's gold. So spiritually or emotionally, you've taken yourself from lead 
and turned it into gold. So, now that I've done my twisted alchemy bit, we've covered a little bit of covered a little bit of the uh, meditations. For the next sort of ten or fifteen minutes before we wrap up class, I'd just like to say, does anybody at all have any questions, either in the chat or? If you want to come on and talk. Uh, Paul, this will save me a lot of typing. Um, I had a question right. about this uh, uh, Harry Potter Philosopher's Stone. When they yeah. talk about it in the book, are they talking about the actual chemicals or are they talking about it as a spiritual situation? I'm going to make a confession here. And please do not ridicule me for this. I am <laughs> not I am not a Harry Potter fan. Okay. Um, the, the only time I've either watched or read something is because my wife is an absolute nutcase about this kind of stuff. Oh, um, so may maybe I, you can ask her and then the next class yeah, you can tell me. Absolutely, I will. In fact, as soon as I get back into the house, assuming she's still awake and I can't see any candles flickering in the bedroom, so I'm assuming she's gone to sleep, I will absolutely do that tomorrow morning and then I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and pop it into the chat for you. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yeah, no problem at all. Anybody else have any questions? I do, Paul. Just one more. Um... Yeah, go for it. In the process that I described earlier, I realized that I made a new energy body, so to speak, mm -hmm. and yeah. I needed to charge that body. I need to give it energy. Yes. So the first thing that came to mind was semen retention and pulling that energy up into the new body, which has worked. Um, my question is, is there any, what other ways could I charge that or charge my new energy field? Okay, so as, as far as charging of an energy field, what kind of energy do you want to give that field would be my first question. Everything. I want to be able to pull that energy into me into my cup to my chalice so that i can give it back out the energy okay. of abundance love health well-being right so we're talking about doing for want of a better word a, a pulling of that energy into you from that second spiritual body into your physical body or into the, your primary spiritual body ergo into your physical body because you are connected to your higher self yes right i would probably and i know it's not i, I know it's not the alchemical route so to speak i would do A straightforward and again th this isn't technically alchemy um, but what I would do is I would use some kind of meditation where you're looking at not the tree and the drawing down of the energy and then sharing and swapping the energy with the earth I, I wouldn't necessarily look at doing that but what i would do is i would try to imagine myself within the root system of a forest so you're going to share that energy of that second light being 
with your first light being and yourself, and between you, you'll get a networking, almost like a, a, a network connection between the three of you. And then by sharing of that and growing of that, you'll be able to draw on that when you need to. But obviously, with everything, as you give, you take. I mean, you know, the yin, the yang, the masculine, the feminine, the light, the dark, however you want right. to, however you want to phrase it. But I, I would, I would, if that was me, I would look at a root system because if, if you think about a forest, okay, and a tree gets sick or gets infected, what happens is the other trees around it flush the tree that's ill with nutrients to try to help cure it and help fix it. So rather than just doing the getting rid of that bad energy and pulling up the green energy, pulling that up, I, I would try to visualize it. If you want to do it via visualization, I, I would sort of put yourself as a tree within a forest or a group of trees whether that be the three of you as trees and then you could maybe bring in some um pyramid or triangular grid work for it but that is how i would go about doing it You're very beautiful thank you very much no problem. Would, would it be okay if I made a suggestion too? Absolutely. That's what we're all about. Uh, okay. Um, I'm considered a, uh, a Christian witch. And what I was thinking is that what you do is if you have a God or deity that you believe in, it's just for meditation is to send prayers and then ask for the guidance and the energy from that deity to be able to help you so that you can get that more energy for yourself thank you as you said that andrea um i heard within my headspace i'm right here all you have to do is connect to me and a lot of times in my practice because like Paul was saying, I get super hyper focused to the point that I I spend, I'll spend all day, literally 24 hours straight. I'll forget to sleep. I get so focused sometimes. And sometimes that's a detriment to my to my well-being. So I have to manage that very carefully. But when I do that, when I get in that state, I sometimes forget to connect to the very essences and the, and the energies, spirits and consciousness that do support me so thank you so much for that reminder i greatly appreciate it well you're welcome and like with a prayer um uh, like a, a meditation either one it's just two different ways of doing it is that it's it's you do it and it's done you don't do it for 24 hours right right and sometimes I, uh, go ahead i can come I, I can completely relate to the hyper focus. I suffer with um, fibromyalgia and insomnia because they're comorbids of each other. Um, and sometimes I will lose hours because I am so focused on doing something. And with the insomnia, I, I don't sleep a lot anyway. It, it, it's nothing for me to go three, sometimes four days without sleep before eventually I end up having some kind of cat nap and sleeping for three hours. Or the other side of it is um, uh, the, the other side of that is sometimes my body um my physical body and my spiritual body just become so tired that i literally just shut down i yes. mean it, it, it can be off-putting but when that happens i i like you have to be very aware of okay it's now the start of day three and i probably had 20 minutes sleep in three days or i need to be Trying to do something 
about this. Um, finding that solution, especially with the insomnia, is not always easy. Um, but being aware of yourself, and especially with you having the shaman, uh, the shamanistic side of things, um, you're very aware of your spiritual self, your higher self. Um, so, you know, I, I should imagine, um, just by some of the questions you're, you're, you're asking, that your lab work is very much connected to your spiritual work. Yes, it is. Um, actually, one more question, if I may ask. I just oh. became recently interested in actually doing the lab work on the mirror, the elements, the physical work. Because mm -hmm. up until I had my children, the physical work never really interested me much. I was more, much more interested in the um, spiritual aspect of it. So yep. what would you recommend as a good book for me to start there on the physical work? Okay. It doesn't necessarily cover... There's two books I would recommend. Okay. And the first one, you're going to laugh at me, but bear with me because it does have some really good information in there. And that's The Idiot's Guide to Alchemy. Love that. It breaks alchemy down into really simple stages, but it also explains about the complexity of alchemy. So if you're looking to get into alchemy, <clears throat> an idiot's guide to alchemy, I would absolutely recommend everybody read. Beautiful. I would also recommend um, The Fire and the Crucible. I forget the author's name, and I should know it off the top of my head, but I, I don't. Uh, it's called The Fire and the Crucible. That's okay. I'm sure a quick Google search can tell me that. Yep. Thank you very and much. If you're looking to get, depending on which kingdom you're looking to, or which realm you're looking to go into, um, you may want to look at uh, the Practical Alchemist as well. And again, I can't remember the author. My alchemy collection is close to 700 books. You got me beat, Paul. I thought I had a lot. <laughs> but here's, here's the thing. Actual physical books, I've got three. Everything else is digital. And the reason I do that is because I can upload it to the cloud, and then when I'm running around or when I have a bit of free time, I can just look at my tablet, my phone, my laptop. I've normally got some kind of electronic device with me, but I can actually go through it. Can I just add one more thing, Mike, uh, for you? Um, yeah. It's to be consistent. It's to uh, make your prayers every night so that you have energy for the next morning. I love that. And... Um... Do you guys mind? I would, if you, if nobody minds, I'd love to share the prayer that was a result of the meditation I did. I, I just have a conversation with God. It's just whatever is on my mind, and that's it. There's no specific prayer that I say. He knows exactly what I'm talking about. When what was interesting to me is because you said consistency, which you're 100 right in that aspect, because that was one of the areas that I struggled in. Um, one of the reasons that I got into shamanism to begin with is because I struggled with bipolar as a teenager, and it resulted in a suicide attempt. And in that, on the other side of that, I was told by the medical community that there was nothing, there was no help. I was going to be put on pills and you know, all that garbage. I didn't want, I didn't want that. So I started seeking alternative health means, and I found shamanism, one of the first things that I found. And in that, um, being consistent with that practice has allowed me to really be able to 
dive deep into these subjects. And the consistency seems to be a key to holding a lot of the answers that I'm looking for. So thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Well, I can understand where you're coming from because I had the same situation and uh, I'm grateful. I, I really honestly believe it was God who saved my life. Me too. <laughs> That's very what, yeah. So keep keep on with that. Always have been. It's been a 22 years. I'm in my 22nd year of practice now. Uh, Shamanism being the oldest modality that I've used and alchemy being one of the newer ones. And also if um to, to learn more about sacred um, or uh, single point consciousness, sacred geometry is a great place to start. There's an excellent show on oh, Gaia TV. I, ab I absolutely guarantee you within the alchemy class, we are going to be covering sacred geometry. I absolutely guarantee you. Cool. Uh, I just finished a book uh, with a book club uh, with uh, divination as well, Ooh. and it was called Math for Mystics, and I really enjoyed that because I just love math. So, math. Mike, another book that I can recommend. It's not so much about the lab side; it's more about the symbolism and psychology. Ooh. But the symbolism aspect you're definitely going to come across, mm -hmm. especially within meditation, is alchemy, an introduction to the sim symbolism and the psychology. Now, that is by a lady called Marie Louise von Franz. M A R I E hyphen L O U. I S E B O N F R A N Z. Thank you. And it's got the Orbis on the front and it's a green cover. One of my favorite books. And I still, to this day, refer to it probably on a weekly basis. Could you just repeat that, Paul, again? Because I only got part of it written down, please. Yeah, absolutely. Um, alchemy. Okay, it's called Alchemy, mm -hmm. an introduction to the symbolism and the psychology. And it's by a lady by the name of Marie Louis von Franz. And how do you spell the last name again? Sorry. Von Franz. V O N F R A N Z. Okay. I'll go ahead and put it in. I'll go ahead and pop that into chat as well. Okay. Thank you. Um, let me give that here. Um, Uh. Paul, um, have you ever heard of a CD-ROM called Ancient Secrets of the Ascended Masters? Yes. That's, um, I have that, and I, my books on alchemy have come from that. So the only physical book I have on alchemy is um, actually this one from St. Germain, Alchemical Self-Transformation. <laughs> uh, with the rainbow on the front? No, it is the picture of, well, it's the classical picture of the alchemist in the lab with the robe. Right. Um, it was uh, Prophet, Mark and Elizabeth Prophet are the authors. Mm -hmm. um, I come across a lot of alchemy, alchemical text in the CD ROM, but when I do, it doesn't always feel right if that makes sense i was wondering it if makes you... perfect having studied alchemy for as many years as i have yes it makes perfect sense right. it, um, it is full of al um of misnomers slight references 
um, rabbit holes. Yeah. <laughs> is the easiest way to describe it. Um, and who was it who shared with us uh, with regard to seeing a rabbit? It was the first person that was discussing their... That was me. Honey. That was you. Honey. Okay. Did you know... And this, this is not a... I'm picking on you specifically. But uh, did you know there is an alchemical picture of a rabbit that sits on the moon? No, but that is very interesting. Yeah, he sits on a moon with a stick in a pot, pounding something in a pot. It's actually an alchemical reference. So when you happen to mention the moon and, you know, you, you were studying that and that kind of thing, and then you made reference to the white rabbit, the mm -hmm. white rabbit is, as we'll find out in later lessons, the white rabbit is an important symbol within alchemy. Cool. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely going to be looking that up. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry this hasn't really been a structured lesson. Um, I kind of agreed to do this at the last minute. Um, but what I will say is it has been recorded. We will be putting it up on the uh, YouTube site, hopefully. Um, so please check it out. It's um, Honey had already posted the uh, link to the YouTube channel. But you can also go to divinationacademy.com. And if you go, uh, if you look at the drop down menu and you go to the um, study guide section, there is an alchemy section up there. And there are a couple of um, slideshows and things like that that have already been put up there. Unfortunately, because I agreed to do this at the last minute, I, I don't have any slideshows. It's just me rambling on. Um, and you guys being absolutely awesome in the chat. Um, and obviously with your participation. Um, so... I just want to thank everybody for being here tonight. Um, please keep an eye on the Facebook page. That's when we'll announce when the next class is going to be. Um, normal service will be resumed. Um, thank you for your time tonight. I appreciate you being here. Um, I appreciate you showing an interest in uh, divination. Um, and if you're not a student of the Divination Academy and you want to become so, if you go onto our main Facebook page, the Divination Academy Facebook page, and you message us, you will be in touch. But I must warn you, we have had a huge influx of people asking to join the academy. So please bear with us. The admin team is a very small team. Everybody is voluntary. We all have lives. We all have real life to deal with, jobs, family, so on and so forth. Please bear with us if you do send us a message. If you've not heard back from us in about a week, just send us a reminder. Send us another message, just trying to prompt us. Um, we are trying to work through the backlog at the moment. But as I say, 
we have had a huge influx of people trying to join the academy um and the admin team is a small group of very very dedicated individuals um so please bear with us but by all means send us uh get in contact either through the website there is a contact us form on there or direct messages through the facebook page and uh we'll hopefully get you enrolled uh divination academy is a pagan based free academy um we have a strong set of ethics uh, we believe education be, should be free for everyone so any of the courses that you see or that you participate in will be completely free we don't charge at all but by the same token as I say, all of the professors and all of the admin team are all volunteers. Sometimes classes do get rescheduled. We apologize for that, but that's just sometimes life happens and it just has to be that way. Um, if any of you are already students and are in um the private messaging group and you have any questions please go ahead message me there if anybody wants to speak to me directly please send me a friend request but i would ask that you do put divination academy or alchemy class or something like that, just so i know where the request is coming from um and again, if you're in the group chat, you'll know that I'm pretty active in there. Um, and yes, I tend to ramble on about alchemy a lot. So thank you all for your participation. Um, I'm going to stop the recording.